Well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're well today. Now, I don't know if you remember, but last week I brought along a tape measure to help us understand what Psalm 103 was saying to us. Now, today we're in Psalm 109, and I've brought something else along to help me teach you from this psalm. This is what I've brought today from home, a plate. I'm sure you use these every day for your meals, breakfast, lunch or dinner. Am I right in thinking sometimes your parents will fill your plates with food, but you don't eat everything? Perhaps they give you a variety of things on your plate, but you, don't, you like some things more than others. There are some things you want to skip over and put to the side, things you don't like. I remember as a child, my mum giving me liver, which I really didn't like at all. And do you know what she said to me? She said, you need to eat it, it's good for you. I never liked it, I still don't like it, but I very much remember my mother saying to me, you need to eat that, it's good for you. And perhaps there's other food that you are made to eat that you don't particularly like, but your parents say to you, you need to eat that, it's good for you. Now, why am I talking about a plate and about your dinner? Well, because there are parts of the Bible at times that we would prefer to skip over. And perhaps Psalm 109 would be one of those parts of the Bible. Parts of the Bible that confuse us, parts of the Bible that make us ask questions, parts which are not easy to digest. The Bible is described to us like food, isn't it? And so as we gather each Sunday, we are eating from God's word. But some parts are harder to swallow than others. And Psalm 109 is just like that. Let me pick up my Bible. Sometimes we want to skip parts of the Bible, and I'll be honest with you, I was thinking this morning, should I skip over this psalm? Because it contains some very difficult things, doesn't it, for us to understand. And we don't always want to eat these parts of the Bible, feed from them. Why has Psalm 109 been given to us? Do you know what I want you to learn this morning? That every part of the Bible is good for us in some way. It's not good for us to skip over certain parts. It's all been given to us for a reason. A little bit like your dinner on a Sunday, you need all of it to go healthy and strong. Even some of the bits that you, you don't like so much. And it's the same with the Bible and same with Psalm 109. So I thought, well, let's not skip this. Let's read it together and understand why it's been given to us. Now, this is a prayer of David. But it's a prayer that contains strong words, troubling words, because he prays for curses to fall on his enemies, doesn't he? Many of the Psalms of David tell us that he faced many opponents, people who opposed him. He was God's anointed king, but others who wanted to bring him down, who who didn't want him to be king, who sought to take his life, people like King Saul. And so this is David praying to God about his opponents. But there's strong words in here, aren't there? But also words that remind us that he was a man who suffered much. He was very troubled by those opponents because they were doing things to him which were really nasty. They were saying horrible things which were undeserved. In the psalm it says, doesn't it, that he doesn't feel it was deserved. He's tried to love them but they've not loved him back and they weren't saying sorry. They weren't repentant. And so what does David pray for? Well, he prays for justice. He says, God, do something. Come and do what is right in this situation. So there's some hard things to read in here. What does it have to say to us? Why is Psalm 109 good for us? Why should we feed from this word? What should we learn? Three things. Well, firstly, it teaches us we should take our troubles to God in prayer. We should take our troubles to God in prayer. We can pray about anything at any time, in any place. And we should pray about those difficult things. We're to bring them to God in our prayers. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we are to leave justice in God's hands. Yes, David prays some very strong words here, doesn't he? But he's bringing them to God. Remember, he was a king. He he could have done some of these things himself but he entrusted himself into God's hands. In fact, there are occasions where he had opportunity to take the life of King Saul, one of his opponents, and he refused because he said it was God who was to judge, not himself. So it's important that we we read the psalm and remember the rest of the story about David. We're to leave justice in God's hands. He is a just and right God. He sees all and we are to bring those injustices to him. That's the second thing. Take our troubles to God, leave justice in his hands, and thirdly, that God 
saves his people. The last verse of the psalm is an expression of faith that God will protect him. It says, for he stands at the right hand of the needy one to save him from those who condemn his soul to death. And you know what? We see God doing that later today in our passage in Acts 5, because we read about the apostles, those who came much later than David, who faced great opposition and God preserving their lives and being with them when they faced injustice. Should we pray this prayer? Well, Jesus calls us to pray for our enemies, doesn't he? But I think we are to bring all of our emotions and all the things we feel before God and entrust them into his care. Take our troubles to him. Leave justice in God's hands. Seek to show grace to others. Pray for our enemies, for them to be repentant and turn to the Lord for salvation. But remember that God saves his people, that he preserves us, that he is with his people. So I hope that helps. We're not to skip over parts of the Bible. It's all here for a reason, Psalm 109 included. Some parts are more difficult to understand than others, some parts more hard to swallow. But it's right that we read all of it, that we feed from each part of it. God has given it to us for a reason. Well, we're going to sing uh, together now and uh, then we're going to have a mission video. Our music group are going to sing first. Uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord, a new music video for us. Uh, we're going to learn about the nation of Bhutan in our mission video. And then we'll have our reading from the book of Acts. Simeon is going to read from, for us from Acts 5, verses 12 to 42. We'll sing for the cause, and then I'll be preaching from that passage in Acts for us. But let's hear the music group lead us in song first. <laughs> 